Hallelujah. Jesus paid a tremendous price for us, didn't he? Oh, glory. Glory. <laughs> Go ahead. More. We want more. We want more, Daddy. We want more. We want more. We want more. And then we want more. You know, you can never get enough of him. You always want more. Once the glory, once you taste glory, it's the greatest drink you can have, man. You know? And, 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 and so many times we don't even realize everybody wants to get high. I love getting high. But I get high in his presence. Amen? Because that's where we came from. See, the enemy just has counterfeit buzz. He's got the counterfeit. Everything he gives you there's always a, 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 a price of pain, sorrow, discouragement, oppression, amen, and loss. Because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Holy Spirit, Jesus, comes to bring life and life abundantly. Amen? And we have a life and a life abundantly. The whole thing is, is getting position. Everyone say, I need to be in position. Be in position. So, I so I can receive. But I first got to believe. Gotta then I receive, receive. And then I execute. Amen. 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 Everyone want to know that you are, everyone say, I'm called, I'm called to, battle. to battle. I have a purpose, I have a purpose. To, destroy to destroy Satan's kingdom. Satan's kingdom. My, destiny My destiny is to infiltrate, is to infiltrate the, world the world system with the talents God gave me, God gave to, me. to rescue those who are lost. Those who are lost. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Acts chapter 1. You know why it's called Acts? Because it's Acts. <laughs> They're Acts. Amen. Jesus, see, Jesus pulled the curtain open. And he said, all right, we're going to, now we're going to act. That's how he ripped the veil. He said, it's time. You know, we just said that we are called to battle. And we have a purpose, and that's to destroy, but you can't destroy without power. There's a purpose of power. Amen? The purpose of power is, first of all, to really overcome Satan's deception and destroy his kingdom. Why? So we can rescue. If we're not walking in the power of the Spirit, then we're walking in our own strength, and we can only last so long. You know, intellect can only last so long. It must come from here to here, and then to your feet, and then back to your mouth, <laughs> where it becomes a sword of the Spirit. In Acts chapter 1, in verse 4, would you read it with me? And being assembled together with them, he what? He what? So he didn't ask him, did he? He didn't say, listen, if you're available... Maybe, maybe you all can get together. You know, he was speaking to 500 disciples. 500. You know how many showed up? Not enough. Well, he said, so he commanded. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he had said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And in verse 8, he tells you why. What does he say? But you shall receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit wow, has come upon you. And you shall be what? Witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria until the end of the earth. In other words, you shall have power as a witness. In other words, that power is going to bring you a new life. What a witness. What a greater witness than you can have as a walk as a new life. You know, Jesus doesn't fix your life. He gives you a new one. Amen? We think, oh, man, he fixed my life. Well, I guess in some sense you may say he fixed it, but in true reality, he gave you a new one. And in that walk of a new one, now we got to maintain new life. So the enemy is going to try to always get you to go back and not forward. Yes. Amen? So we must be a witness. That witness is that we have a new life. I got a new life. When I go into the world of people that used to know me, especially my wife who used to know me, Amen. when she saw me, she thought I was an alien. Because <laughs> she, she said, man, whoa, what happened to you? I got a new life. 
See, we got to stop looking in the mirror and have the mirror dictate who we are. Amen? Actually, sometimes you need to look in the mirror and find out what's in you and get rid of it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So one of the things that the devil wants to do, he wants to come and drain us. The Bible says, make no place for the devil. He comes to drain us. The Holy Spirit wants to come and fuel us. Amen? Amen? So we got to keep this fire going all the time. That's why one of the things Jesus said, look at if you abide. Too many people do not abide. And they wonder why that they get defeated, wonder why oppression overtakes them. They wonder why the devil's accessing them. You know, what does the word say? Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5 for a second. And, and this is so profound. And it's, it, and it's not taken serious enough. First Peter chapter 5, in verse 6. Let's speak it together. First Peter 5, 6. Therefore what? Humble yourself. You know what that means? You got to get out of the way. That means you're willing to receive. You cannot receive without humble. You know how many times people only listen? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 I got it. Yeah, I got it. But they're really not hearing. So they're just shaking their head, yes, 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 just to keep you away. Okay, hurry up and get out of my way. Yeah, 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 I'm listening. But they're really not hearing. Amen? That's why if you read everywhere in the Word, it says, he who hears what the Spirit says. So it says, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may what? Exalt you in due time. Casting your care upon him for he what? He cares for you. I think that's one of the things that the enemy always tries to infiltrate us is that, why, why me? Well, God doesn't love me. Why would this happen to me? Why am I going through these trials and tribulations? Why are these things happening to me? I am the only one it happens to. Hallelujah. Well, let me share this with you, that trials and tribulations are multiple facets. First of all, they expose our impurities. They also expose your enemies. Amen. Amen. And they also toughen you up. Amen. They toughen you up in the spirit. Let me tell you, the greater attack sometimes, the greater glory he gets when you, when you overcome. Amen. There's things that are going to happen in our life that it's just going to seem impossible. But all things are possible with him. So he says here in verse 8, be what? Sober. That means alert. I need to be alert. And I need to be what? Vigilant. Consistent. So without consistency, can you be alert? No. If you're not consistent in prayer. If you're not consistent in worship. If you're not consistent in fellowship. Let me tell you, consistency is one of the keys to overcome. I hear people complain and grumble all the time. Well, where have you been? Well, uh, I haven't been in service in a year. Well, hello. I hear people call all the time. Man, you wouldn't believe how much I'm struggling. <coughs> well, there's a, there's a law called what you sow is what you reap. And nobody escapes it, even the heathen. So there's got to be a place where we are consistent no matter what. That means that discipline's got to be a part of our life. Remember, this is a military operation, not a religious one. We need to erase the word religion because that just means bondage. Jesus is not religion. He's God Almighty who came and created everything and came to bring us a sword. He came to bring us his presence so we could overcome and so that we can walk in the power of his might and not our own. So he says, there's that man, we need to be alert. We need to be vigilant. We need to be consistent. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, Walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may what? Oh, he's trying to kick your butt, man. He's trying to steal everything. And let me tell you, they're all lined up outside. See, they ran. Once the presence of God comes, they go. Oh, yeah, feel good now. Praise God. I'm good now. Wait till you get to that door. They're all waiting for you to come, to come back into that house. And they're gonna, they try to come back by what you say. They're trying to get you to agree with something. 
They're trying to get you to a place where they can deceive you. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception. And his power is fear. Man, when we were singing that song about being freed from a slave of fear, wasn't that powerful? Yeah. See, when you speak that, something begins to happen because what you speak is what you eat, and what you eat is what you become. So if I'm speaking light, I'm eating light, more darkness is leaving. Those demons are going, man. I mean, come on, they've been paying rent free for an hour. I mean, they've been living in us for a long time. And the more we maintain that consistency, the more light, the more fuel. And when we have that fuel going, the more we're easy to overcome. You become more sensitive to the things. The devil won't get near you. You'll know him coming from a distance. And here he comes. You never know what he's going to drive, but he shows up somehow. Amen? So we need to be consistent so we can maintain alertness. In Acts chapter 10. Hallelujah. Acts 10. Purpose of power is to be a what? A witness. So we can overcome Satan's deception and destroy his kingdom. Remember, we've been called to battle. If you're not in a battle, you're going to become a casualty. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all want to be struck first or would you rather strike first? Amen. Amen. Man, if, you know, when you get struck first, it's hard to recover, isn't it? So I get up every morning and I strike first. Verse 38. It says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? The Holy Spirit and with power. And who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was what? With him. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit. He was expressing the power because the anointing is three things. The anointing is his presence, his power, and his truth. It's the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. And God packed it and he, made, he, he got a body and he packed it out of the word and he put his eternal presence, power, and truth into a body, and he labeled it as a business card. He said, this is Jesus, my son, but it's actually me, but we're, you know, we're one. So if, if you want to know me, here's my card. His name's Jesus. No one comes to the Father except for through him. That's his card. Does everybody get it? That's him. So in this it says, he was anointed with the Holy Spirit, anointed meaning all over. He was filled, saturated with the eternal power, presence of God Almighty. For what? He was expressing the power over deception of the unseen realm. How many of you know demons come up and speak to you? Amen. Amen. If we could unzip this realm, man, you'd see all kinds of demons. You wouldn't see them in here right now. We might see them in here in a few, but anyways. Why? They come to influence. Remember, your influence is not according to what you see. It's what you unsee. It's what you don't see. Everyone, every, th every thought, come on, say it with me. Every thought, every thought has, a has a voice. Every voice, every voice has, a presence. has a presence. Every thought, every thought releases, releases an, image an image and an emotion. An emotion. Demons get fed by emotion. So they're always trying to create an emotion. Now, there's three emotions they don't get fed by. Peace, joy, and righteousness. Why? Because that's love. That's God's love. Amen? They don't get fed by that. They starve. Do you ever notice when somebody gets an argument, usually it gets worse? It starts getting worse. Why? Because those demons go, food, here's lunch. Man, they'll leave a person and go to another one. That always reminds me of the uh, road runner and the coyote or whatever it is. You know when he always shows up with a, a, a fork and knife? And yes. <laughs> Except for he never gets it. <laughs> he reminds me of the demon. You know, yes, all right. So somebody's getting in an argument. Why? He's trying to get us, the devil tries to get us to react. Amen. Those emotional attachment spirits are always creating a, a reaction. That means react to the old. So it releases an emotion and those spirits come and get fed. 
Same thing with addiction. It's the same thing. How, how many all know addiction is nothing more than an overwhelming desire? So is it any difference between lust and addiction? No. It's the same. Let's go to Acts 26. So it's whose responsibility is to make what unseen to become seen? Ours. Are you going to be able to do it without the power of the Spirit? No. You constantly go on a cycle. You'll be chasing your tail like a dog. Or a cat. Acts 26. Remember, Jesus commanded them, didn't he? Get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Get baptized in the Holy Spirit. He commanded 500 disciples, come on, get together, get baptized. Don't, don't go nowhere. Wait till you're all filled with me. 120 showed up. 380 started denominations. I'm still looking for the first Baptist church. I don't know where it is. Everybody says it's the first. I still can't find it. I got them all over the corners. I mean, I want to know which one's the first one. They got to be lying then. We're the first Baptist church. No, you can't be. The other guy down the street says the same thing. Hallelujah. Acts 26, verse 14. Hallelujah. Now, now, Paul had an experience. Saul had an experience, and then he changed his name to Paul. In verse 14, it says, And when we had fallen to the ground, <laughs> I heard a voice speaking to me, saying in Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So I said, Who are you, Lord? Did you notice he called him Lord? Yeah, because he kicked him off the horse, blinded him, uh, he knew that he didn't have power over this. Oh, uh, Lord, you're somebody more powerful than me, man. I got, who are you? He says, why are you persecuting me? He says, who are you, Lord? And he says, I am Jesus whom you're persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet. For I have appeared to you for this purpose to make you a minister and a what? Witness. witness. Now, does Paul need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost to be a witness? Yes, and he did. I'll make you a witness both of the things which you have seen and the things which you have, you will what? Yet, I will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people or the religious ones, as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. To what? Open their eyes. In order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to what? The power of God. Do you understand why we got rescued? And why we need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? That they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. See, we are called to be witnesses, ministers of those things that are unseen and calling those things to become seen. See, what happens is when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, the scales come off your eyes. You walk in two realms. You're now a citizen of an eternal place. You no longer belong here. So when you go to sleep, you realize the only reason why you got to sleep is because you're still carrying this flesh suit. But your spirit gets regenerated. In fact, you desire to be more clothed from heaven. There's something that changes in you. You get a new spirit. And now is more of a thirst and hunger to want to know more. You're not religious anymore. Although people have turned back to religion. You know why? They stopped getting fueled. We must constantly be fueled. That's what keeps that fire going. That's what keeps us going. That's what keeps us young in the spirit. Amen? We want to be vibrant. We don't want to take no garbage. Look, and Jesus was not a wimp. He kicked butt, man. You're in my way. Uh, it started right in the garden. He said, everybody out of the pool, right? 
All right, you guys, out of here. He wasn't going to take no garbage from nobody. He hates religion. He hates evil. We should hate evil. We're supposed to hate evil, not pet it, not compromise it, and not ignore it. It's our responsibility to expose it. How many all know that in our homes, if we begin to expose more evil, there'd be a lot more things better? Amen? Like accursed items. That's evil. People just, they just ignore these things. And they wonder why things are being stolen. And they don't know. Look, the devil doesn't come to you and say, hi, I've got an attack on you today. This is what I want to do. But don't tell nobody. You'd go call somebody anyway, so it wouldn't matter. Too many people run to the phone and not the throne. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> so we're to be the witnesses of things that are not only unseen, but as Jesus begins to reveal things to us. He says, he talked about faith here. Faith is present. Everyone say, faith is present. Faith is present. Hope is future. Now, faith, I always look at faith as spiritual sight because when Jesus says do something, you see it and then you do it. Amen? When he tells you something, you see it. And then you do it. Abraham was counted as in faith, wasn't it? God spoke to him. Abraham did it because he saw it and then he didn't know the exact thing. So many people are waiting on, what's God's plan for me? They're waiting on a blueprint to come out. Let me tell you, he's not going to tell you the fullness that unfolds. Because we try to alter it anyways. Oh, Lord, I really think we need to put a third floor on this house. We start altering it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 1. Is it warm in here? Hallelujah. <laughs> I just need one person to agree. <laughs> Says two touch and agree comes to pass, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's speak it. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified i was with you in weakness in fear and much trembling and my speech and my preaching were not with much persuasive words of human wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith would not be in the wisdom of man but in the what power in the power of god However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature yet not the wisdom of this age nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to what nothing but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor entered in the heart of the man the things which God has prepared for those who what? Love him. But God has revealed them to us through his what? Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. So you think we need to be filled with the Spirit? Amen. Is why Because when we're filled with the Spirit of God, we look for deeper things. More revelation comes. You know, the Word tells us that when there's not enough revelation, that people restrain, they let go of the restraints because they become discouraged. They become weary. Revelation is what keeps you connected. So we're stay connected. We be disciplined to connect every day. And then when illumination and revelation come, it's like, yes, daddy spoke again. Because what does it bring? It brings a reality that you're his child and he's your dad. See, then you go beyond just God. God is God, but he's more than God. He's my dad, and I'm his son. And your sons and daughters. That's his most desire for any one of us. Is that we know him as daddy. And if he's the daddy that loves us. Is he holding anything back from us? 
only the things that we would just use to destroy something or things that would take us out of position. But he loves us uncondi unconditionally. Amen? So here we see that eye has not seen, ear has not heard. So we want to stay filled with the Spirit so we can see what he wants us to see, so we can hear what he wants us to hear. Every day it's our responsibility to offer to him our spirit, soul, and body and flesh. Here, take it. Why? Because we want to constantly walk away from ourselves. We want to always, always give it to him. Because every time we try and fix something, we just make it worse, don't we? Amen? I'm going to go to Acts chapter 2 for a moment. Acts chapter 2. In verse 38. And Peter said to them, what? Repent. Repent. I mean, turn away from the presence of evil. Repent from your sins and transgressions. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises to you, everyone say, I'm promised. promised. It's to me and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. So is it a promise? Yes. So does God want to empower me and you? Does he want to keep us empowered? It's a promise. I get so many people tell me all the time, well, that was for then. That's one of the disciples. They needed it then. Well, you don't think Jesus changed something? See, one of the things that begins, listen, the word of God is phenomenal. I love the word. There's something I love more than the word. The person. See, because when the person shows up, we speak. Does everybody get this? This is relationship. David always said, I always see the Lord before me. That's relationship. If you don't see him before you in everything that you do, then you're not in relationship. It's long distance. He wants to be involved in everything. That's why he wants us to be baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered, why? This purpose of power is to overcome deception. The purpose of the power is to be a witness. The purpose of the power is to express his character. The purpose of the power is to cast out devils. I mean, remember, we're called to destroy. Right? We're called to battle. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom. You're not going to destroy it in your own strength and your intellect. It's not going to work. Hallelujah. So everyone say, I'm promised. To be, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. But I got to repent first. You know why we repent? Because we activate the blood. When you activate the blood of Christ, it washes you because the blood always goes before the Spirit. Never the Spirit before the blood. Amen? Now, He'll draw you. He'll draw you to what? Repent. Then what? You repent, you're washed by the blood, and pew, wham, He comes in there. You know, have you ever asked to be possessed by the Holy Spirit? It's amazing all the songs we sung in the world, we got possessed by demons. Now we need to sing the songs that possess us in the Holy Spirit. Why? So we have power. Remember, there's a purpose of this power. Oh, glory. 2 Peter chapter 2. I needed some of that power to start that bike this morning. Lay my hands on that battery. Thank God my neighbor was home. <laughs> yes, my, my battery charger's missing. My cables are missing. Hallelujah. I'm like, huh. Oh. I couldn't find nothing. Then my keys were in my bag that my wife took, so I couldn't even start my own car. 
but I had victory. <laughs> Second Peter, chapter 2, I mean, uh, chapter 1, verse 2. Let's read it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord and his what? Divine, divine power. Everyone say divine power. Divine. Has given, come on, read this with me. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great and precious what? Promises that through these things you may be what? Partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Wow. So, we're partakers of this divine power, aren't we? When we are filled with the Spirit of God. Man, you, can, you know people. Look at me. This may sound strange to you, but there's a difference between saved and born again. In fact, that's why there's three chambers of the tabernacle. The outer court, holy place, most holy place. Outer court salvation. Most, uh, the holy place is priesthood. Amen. Amen. Most holy place is kingship. Three, three, three messages, three difference of presence, three anointings, amen, three purposes and functions. Each one has its own function. The eternal port to eternity called the tabernacle. Oh, glory to God. So when this God has given us divine power, look at when the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes, you get power. That power allows you to walk in a divine nature, in a divine character. And when God begins, how many of y'all know that when you're walking in that, you're earning God's trust more and more and more? So a divine presence, his divine, remember the, the anointing is the eternal presence and power of truth of God Almighty, right? So I'm, if I'm walking in his divine nature, his character, divine power, I'm going to, what he's going to release is divine favor. How many of y'all want favor of God? Man, don't you want to be back by heaven? So when, when the devil shows up, he sees all heavens behind you. He ain't, he, you ain't got to mess with me, man. You can harass him. See, the devil doesn't have to... Look, too many people let the devil harass them. We should be harassing him. We should be... You know what? We shouldn't be the prey. He should be. Oh, glory. Go to Isaiah 11. So we're going to overcome all things with the divine power, divine nature, and divine favor. Amen? Because we have the power of the Holy Spirit. And our greater trials are going to bring greater glory to Him. Amen? Isaiah chapter 11. Oh, yes. Now, with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there are seven attributes that are released in me and you. It removes us out of the, the intellect of carnality into the mind of Christ. In verse 2, would you speak it with me? It says, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon me. Do you think that's what happens when the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes? Yes. Okay. And what's, what are you going to get? The Spirit of wisdom and understanding and the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. That fear means reverence, honor, and respect. Without the fear of the Lord, there really is no relationship. So these are the seven attributes of the Holy Spirit. So that your wisdom and knowledge and understanding come from above. You're actually able to utilize and use. In other words, wisdom. There's wisdom from above. There's wisdom from beneath. The world has all kinds of wisdom. Amen? We, now allow, we never allow the wisdom of the world to supersede the wisdom of God. In fact, the wisdom of God can use the wisdom of the world. Amen? 1 Corinthians 12. So with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, not only is there seven attributes with power and a divine nature, but there are tools. How many of y'all need tools when you go out to a job? Those are called gifts. 1 Corinthians 12.
in verse 1. Why are we talking about this today? Because we need to be refreshed. We need to understand that we need to have this power maintain the fuel constantly. In verse 1, what does it say? Now concerning spiritual gifts, I don't want you to be stupid. I mean ignorant. Verse 2, what does it say? You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. Is the Lord the Spirit? Yes. There are, different, there are diversities of, of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, and another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretations of tongues. Now, this is pretty wild because when you really think about this, when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, what's the first thing that gets manifested? Tongues. If you notice that all of those things, the foundation of all of the, all those tools, it lays on what? Tongues. It's the only one you can't mess up. <laughs> Man, when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, you just speak in tongues, that's it, you know? And when he says that to one is this, it doesn't mean that you only can speak in tongues and you only have the word of knowledge and you only have, no. When you have the Holy Spirit, you got it all. You got it all. So not only do you have the seven attributes of the character of Christ with the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and counsel, but you have the tools of operation. Miracles, signs, and wonders. You know what the greatest miracle is? You. You. Why? Because when you change, filled with baptism and the Holy Spirit, people are going to look at you, call you an alien too one day. Mark 16. Hallelujah. Mark 16. So is the bapti baptism of the Holy Spirit with tongues promised to everyone? Yes. Yes. Now why wouldn't the devil want you to be in power with the Holy Spirit? Because he, he, he's going to get exposed more. You're going to have dominion over him. You know, I could go on about speaking in tongues, and we have a whole teaching on that, but I'm going to share one, something very important besides what I'm going to share in a minute. The devil doesn't know what you pray when you pray in tongues. It's the only thing he doesn't know. Amen? Other than that, he knows everything else you're praying, doesn't he? He's going to try and interrupt everything. So even when I pray in my common language, I make sure I bind, blind, mute, and deaf every power of darkness, wickedness, and heavenly places, principalities, and every demon that's coming against the angels working on my behalf. I'm going to assist them. Amen? All right, Mark 16, 16, let's go. What's the word believe mean? Follow. So if you're not a follower and you say you're a believer, what are you? A liar. Okay, we got that down. He who believes and is baptized will be what? Saved. But he who does not believe is, will be what? Condemned. And these signs will follow those who follow. Hello? In my name they will what? Cast out demons. Why? Because that's what the problem is, isn't it? It isn't your wife, your husband, your boss, your job, or your pastor. Amen? The problem is 
demons, which is a disembodied spirit, looking for another body. He's trying to get a reaction from you to get fed. And it says, and they will speak with new tongues. It doesn't mean you're going to go to college and learn another language. It means you'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit with tongues where you can speak directly to your Father. Amen. And they will take up serpents and they will drink anything deadly. It doesn't mean you're going to go get a snake and dance with it. Amen. Or you're going to siphon your neighbor's car and drink the gas. Because you will die on both events. Amen. It's called te testing God. It says, but they're by no means surging. In other words, if you do something stupid and you didn't know about it, you got dominion over it. That's why he says, bless the food, right? And they will lay hands on the sick and they will what? Praise God. Praise God. Listen, sometimes you just need to lay hands on yourself. Man, I baptized myself a few times in my own tub. <laughs> yes. Get up praying in the Holy Ghost. Man, I, man, let me tell you, I'll look in the mirror. I'll look for one. My wife and I were getting ready to travel one day. Man, I was feeling terrible. And I said to my wife, I said, listen, you need to pray for me. She went, oh, Lord Jesus. I said, no, look in my eyes. Cast that thing out. I'm sick. She let him cast that spirit out of me. I was fine. Got on the plane. Hello. We are not fighting flesh and blood. The other side's got to become a reality to me and you all the time. Not just when we feel like it. Amen. People go to church because they, when they feel like it. I'm going to pray today because I feel like it. Amen. I'll quote some scripture because I feel like it. You're dangerous. People rely on their feelings. They're the most dangerous people there are. You don't know what they're going to do. And you know what? They will turn on you. Oh. The purpose of power, the anointing, overcome and destroy Satan's kingdom. We need to walk in the power. See, walking in the power is overcoming. Amen? People so easily get swayed and deceived and sucked out. And then fear comes. Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. Look how much fear interferes with people's lives. Look at when you first got saved, weren't you? Look for... Man, they, they, this place is weird. They worship God. And they dance. You know, but the Bible says that we, we acknowledge, we worship him by dance. Amen? In, in Jude chapter, or in Jude 1. Hallelujah. Jude. <clears throat> Is everybody okay? Jude 14. Let's speak it together now. Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints. Who are they? Me and you. As long as you make it. <laughs> to what? Execute judgment on all to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are what? Grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lust. They mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ and how he told you that there would be mockers in the last time. Are we in the last time? Are we in the last days? Man, we're in the last minutes. Let me tell you. Who would walk according to their own ungodly lust. These are sensual persons who cause divisions not having the spirit. 
Not, in other words, they are not walking in the Spirit. They call themselves believers. But let me tell you, believers, the ones that call themselves believers that are not walking in the Spirit are the worst ones. Because they think they know it all. They can memorize the page numbers. They can shoot the scriptures. But there's no power. No power. They can't even have dominion over their own emotions. They're up and down all the time. One day they're good, the next day they're down. Up there they're good. No, 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 no steadfastness. Unstable. And I'm telling you, if you'll stay filled with the power of God, if you stay fueled with the fire, you'll stay stable. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Let's go a little further. Verse 20. But you, beloved, do what? Building, Building yourselves up. That means stir yourself up. Amen. Amen? Sometimes you need to get off your blessed assurance and stir yourself up. Amen. Stir yourself up. Building yourself up on your most holy faith by what? Praying in the Holy Spirit. So everybody got it? Keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ until unto eternal life. So we need to stir ourselves up. Let me share with you. When you stir yourself up, God will meet you. Amen. So many times you're waiting, we're waiting on God to come. And he says, I'm over here. You come here. Amen. That's why he, when he showed up to the disciples, what did he say? Follow me. He didn't say, believe me. He said, follow me. And they dropped everything and followed him. There was something about this man that they followed. He penetrated their carnal mind and grabbed hold of their spirit and said, come on, follow me. I got something more for you than what the world has to offer. In fact, I want to tell you where you came from, who you are, and where you're going. Oh, glory. So we're to stir ourselves up. So he comes and he meets us. That's why we praise and worship. When we praise and worship, what happens? He comes. He says, draw near to me, then I'll draw near to you. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Hallelujah. Man, when you get well, look at when you wake up in the morning, good morning, Holy Spirit. Start praying in the Holy Ghost. While well, you're stirring yourself up. Just start praying in the Holy Ghost. You're stirring yourself up. Sometimes you need to stir yourself up just to go make the coffee. Amen. Then when you get the coffee, you should be doing double. <laughs> now you're getting two words out at the same time compared to one. <laughs> and the jets are running. <laughs> Glory. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse something. Yeah, did you get that? <laughs> Verse 6. Let's speak it, please. Therefore, I what? I remind you to what? To what? Stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. What's he talking about? Stir up the what? The Holy Spirit, man. Pray in tongues. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of what? power and of love and a sound mind. Why? Because when you pray in the spirit, you connect. And you know what happens? Ah, you're fueled. Now you become hunter instead of prey. Yeah. First John chapter 2. Purpose of power. Man, we got to have the power. We need to be a witness. We need to be a sign and wonder. Listen, 
Before you start casting demons out of people, you need to get them out of yourself. You need to cast your own devils out. Or get somebody to agree with you. First John chapter 2 and verse 15. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides. Let me ask you this. Is what's easier to do the will of God? With the power of God or in your own self? Oh, in fact, you can't do the will of God in your own self. Amen? That's why so many people backslide. What happens? They let themselves get drained by the enemy. After they've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. They become religious and they become prideful. I don't need that no more. I don't, I don't need to worship no more. I know the word. Well, the word knows you. And he knows whether you're hot, cold, or lukewarm. Amen? You stay consistent, you'll stay alert. You'll see other things people don't see. You'll be a rescue to someone, amen, that can't see it. You'll have dreams and visions while you sleep. Things will begin to happen. You'll be earning the trust of the Lord, and he'll give you more. Oh, glory. Verse 17, it says what? The world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. 18. Little children, what? It is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which you know that it is the last hour. Listen, your spouse is not the Antichrist. Hello? So, hallelujah. Neither your boss or anything else. Now, I'm not saying they might not, they may be influenced by the Antichrist, but they're not the Antichrist. You'll know them by their fruit, right? Yeah. Amen. If you see a tail on anyone, you know. See horns? Verse 19. It says that they went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would have what? Continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. See, we like to praise and worship because we want breakthrough every time. Breakthrough. You know, when you go to the grocery store, you get more groceries with more than one bag. Amen? Amen? So what happens is why we praise and worship good and long. I mean, it was real, wasn't long at all, really. But we stretch. See, the more you stretch, the more you get filled. And the more you can get. See, you come to the end of yourself. You slowly come into the end of yourself. And then become spirit to spirit. And you know who you are, where the spirit witnesses to you that you're his child. And you have all things. And he loves you unconditionally. Or no matter what's going on, it's going to work to the good. Because heaven's behind you. Glory. Verse 20. But you have a what? Anointing from the Holy One. And you what? And you know all things. And you know all things. Amen? Amen. And that's where no, nothing, can, nothing against you is going to prosper you. Amen? He was in you is greater than he was in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me through the anointing. I'm more than a conqueror. And if God be for me, who can be against me? See, there is purpose and power. It's not to golf. It's not to play tennis, even though I asked for it. <laughs> I try to get everything I can gain. Man, I need to be anointed for this tennis game, Lord. You know I don't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> 
People are being gifted with talents or anointed. Amen? God-given talents placed in us. Every one of us has a talent, specifically from your father that you were born with. He wants to clean it up, straighten it up so it can be used for his glory. But he wants to empower it with his personal presence, power, and truth so that we can use it to infiltrate the world system because there's so many that are living outside Amen? Of salvation's truth. Lost. L-O-S-T. It's time. Time's running out. Don't write, let religion or circumstances in your life prevent you from abiding. You abide in his word. You abide in his presence, his praise and worship. And you abide in fellowship. You maintain a consistent that takes discipline. Remember, we are in a military operation. You and I have been sent from another realm into this realm to fulfill a mission. And you can't do it in your own strength. These are not Bible studies. These are training sessions. Amen? Amen. This is an operation. Jesus is Lord of hosts. means Lord of the army. He never wanted to impart in an area where it's religious. That's what the devil does. Then he gets the religions of battle religions. Then people are just saying, my flesh is bigger than yours. Amen? But there's a power from on high that's divine, promised to every one of his children so they can overcome and speak to him directly. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed. We thank you for your word today. We thank you for reminding us about stirring ourselves up so that we can have power, love, and a sound mind and that we can always overcome fear. Fear. Satan's weapon that always tries to deceive us. Lord, let this word that you've released to us today not only be illuminated, but let it become a revelation to all of us so that we can stir ourselves up and connect back with you so that we may walk in the true power of your Holy Spirit and overcome to be a sign and wonder that you would receive all glory, all honor. And all praise in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.